everybody, it's Dr. Moore. We're going to talk about Plato's Gorgias. So Socrates' first question in this dialogue is, what does Gorgias teach? And Gorgias and Polis are actually pretty cagey on the subject of what Gorgias teaches. And it's a little weird early in the dialogue that they won't come right out and say what it is that Gorgias teaches. Chirophon is able to get a preliminary answer out of Polis. He gets Polis to say that Gorgias' teaching partakes of the most admirable of the crafts. But that's pretty vague. And when Socrates turns to start questioning Gorgias, Gorgias too gives these wishy-washy sorts of answers. First, he says that his teaching is concerned with the source of freedom for mankind itself. And at the same time, it is for each person the source of rule over others in one's own city. But when Socrates pushes Gorgias a bit further, he retreats to an answer much like Polus's. I teach the greatest of human concerns, Socrates, and the best. Again, very vague. Socrates presses Gorgias on the idea that crafts or fields of knowledge have to be about something. So the art of weaving produces clothes. The art of medicine produces health. But what does the art of oratory produce? Well, Gorgias says speeches. But here's the thing. Don't speeches need to be about something? Like you speak about a subject. Don't you have to give speeches about clothes or about medicine? And throughout their conversation, Socrates continues to press Gorgias on this question. If you're teaching people how to give speeches about a subject, doesn't that mean you have to know about that subject? For example, if you're teaching people how to give speeches about medicine, doesn't that presume you're an expert in medicine? The real problem here is that Gorgias claims to teach his students about politics and political action. And Socrates argues that in order to give speeches about politics, one must understand the subject of politics. And of course, for Socrates, politics is the art of producing justice. Therefore, if Gorgias is teaching people how to give political speeches, he must understand justice, politics, all of it. Now, Gorgias gets himself into trouble when he makes this surprising claim. He says that he can't be held accountable if his students do unjust things. And Socrates finds this very surprising because he says, well, if you're a good teacher and you understand justice as you claim to, then shouldn't your students also understand justice? And if they understand justice, how could they do unjust things? Okay, so this conversation between Gorgias and Socrates raises two big questions. The first is a question about Socrates, and the second is a question about us. Question one, what does Socrates teach? Remember, Socrates says to Gorgias, if you claim to be a teacher of justice, and you claim to understand justice, your students should not do unjust things. If your students do do unjust things, it must mean either that you're a bad teacher or that you don't really understand justice. So what does this mean for Socrates? He seems to understand justice, and he seems to be a teacher, but he has a famously unjust student, Alcibiades. Alcibiades was a highly regarded young Athenian. He was a brilliant general and reputedly very beautiful. His name comes up multiple times in Plato's Gorgias. Socrates loves Alcibiades and tries to teach him philosophy, but Alcibiades famously had a tyrannical soul. In fact, Alcibiades is banished from Athens during the Peloponnesian War because his fellow Athenians believed he aspired to tyranny. Socrates is put on trial in part for corrupting the youth of Athens. And that charge, it seems, is maybe particularly about Alcibiades. So, if Socrates knows so much about justice, why do his students do unjust things? Okay, and here's the second big question, the one about us. When we study the liberal arts, or even philosophy, what is that study about? 
Gorgias suggests he's in possession of a special kind of knowledge and that he can teach people how to think and communicate in a way that will advance their careers and let them succeed in any endeavor at all. Doesn't it kind of sound like they're talking about the liberal arts? Isn't that how we talk about the liberal arts and liberal education? How often, for example, have you heard people praise the critical thinking skills you're going to acquire at university? Well, what are critical thinking skills? What do they help you think about? Maybe your response is, why, the greatest of human concerns, Dr. Moore, and the best. We always talk this way about the liberal arts. They'll teach you critical thinking skills that will lead to many possible careers, meaningful lives, and service to society. I mean, this all sounds good. But isn't it just as wishy-washy as the stuff we hear from Polis and Gorgias? What are critical thinking skills? What are we teaching you to do? Here's the thing we need to ask ourselves. Are Socrates' questions for Gorgias also questions for us? When we talk about the liberal arts this way, are we like Gorgias? When we study something like philosophy or a subject like justice, ought we to be teaching you thinking skills that help you problem solve? Or do we actually need to be teaching you morality, goodness, teaching you what justice is? Socrates seems to incline towards this second option, that if you're studying something like philosophy or the liberal arts, you ought to be acquiring real knowledge about the most important things. I look forward to hearing what you think about all this. Thanks for watching.